Hello, I am Andy Thorai, founder and principal at thefieldcto.com, home of unbiased emerging technology strategy advice. Today, I would like to discuss how the IT operations guys are completely stressed out with this new normal or the working from home concept and how we can make things easy for them. In the good old days, the enterprise system architecture used to be very simple. During those days, the support and servicing of those applications, while complicated, is somewhat mature and streamlined. We had major legacy applications running in a data center or data centers around the world. In case of any issues, one of the monitoring, logging, alerting tools such as APM, NPMD, ITSM, or one of the logging tools will catch it and escalate the alerts to the L1 team sometimes known as incident managers, to take a look at and possibly to solve it if they can. If they can't solve it, they obviously escalate to, to level two, which is generally engineers. And if they can't solve it, they raise it to level three, who are generally domain experts or demigods who will almost solve anything. This system worked so well over the years. Some of the newer digital enterprises are completely native cloud bond, so these issues may not be related to them. But for everyone else, the current scenario looks like this. In addition to existing data centers, most enterprises implement either a hybrid cloud or a multi-cloud strategy. While this helps with agility, reduce cost, scalability, and innovation of new ideas fairly quickly, the operations teams have another stack to maintain. The problem is most of the operating technologies may not be the same as a classic enterprise data center tools. Especially, they will be using a newer set of tools that might include things like Prometheus, Senzu, Catchpoint, CloudWatch, Datadog, Azure Monitor, uh, Google Stack, Stack Driver, or one of the hundred other tools that are available uh, to monitor, alert, and manage cloud stacks. So what happens now? You need to either retrain, retool your existing workforce or hire a new set of incident managers to manage this silo of workloads. Given that it is a different tool set, a different process, and different set of experts, they form a separate group and most times work independently on their own as a group. They have their own pyramid of L2 and L3 groups where the issues get escalated up. When enterprises start down this path, in no time they will build a silo for each stack, which is a problem. When some of the applications run in a hybrid mode, it's a nightmare uh, between teams to figure out what is the underlying problem if anything happens. To add to this issue, your DevOps Agile teams are cranking up changes faster than ever before, particularly because the Agile development and release methodology allows you to change business critical functions faster than ever before. They could change a small portion of the whole application and deploy it fairly quickly. It can either get pushed out to cloud or on-prem or, or both if you're maintaining uh, uh, two instances of the same application in the hybrid model. Just a few years ago, the release cycles used to be much slower. Imagine that. It used to be weekly, monthly release cycles even. Uh, changes were meticulously managed in those days. Somewhat static infrastructure between those release cycles. So everything was somewhat smooth. Now, the release cycle has changed to almost like a fast food culture or, or a digital demand culture, as they call it. I want what I want right now. It almost sounds like a, a young baby demanding, but it is like if I send a text or a message to someone, I expect a reply in 30 seconds or less, a faster, hyper culture. The combination of DevOps, CICD, being continuous integration, continuous development, has moved the enterprise software to that culture now. Today, it's not uncommon to have multiple releases in a day. There are times you will have hourly updates for the same application, the same functionality. 
in those fast cycles, a lot of things get compromised. QA, testing, documenting the changes properly, or even tracking changes. And validating those things don't affect others. But my pet peeve is that at times, the changes are released without knowing if it will affect other parts of the application or even other applications. Especially when, when everything is being built as microservices now, a small change in one service can affect multiple applications at the same time. When a business critical application gets impacted, then the goose chase starts. If it's a critical alert, the bells and whistles will go everywhere. Sometimes the IT operations teams are clueless about the changes that went in, so they don't even know what they are chasing after. Root cause identification becomes a major issue. As they say, if you don't know what is broken, you won't be able to fix it. Gartner once said, 85% of all performance incidents can be traced to changes. While those numbers seem a little high, but I can see that happening sooner. Code changes, network path changes, routing, configuration, infrastructure changes, etc. Any change that's going to affect an application will do it sooner than later, as we all know. This all leads to more confusion, chaotic environment in a Networks Operations Center. This is even before the fact that the Knox Center has uh, to move to remote locations and work mostly with their laptop without the access to some of the, the bells and whistles and big monitor screens and dashboards they have at the Knox Centers. One way to avoid that would be to, to add more personnel to the pyramid, uh, L1, L2, L3 folks. But that comes at a cost. They are cheap. Especially with the economy slowing down, IT departments are actually looking for ways to trim the cost, not increase it. This means they need to work more hours, spend more time chasing the proverbial wild goose. No wonder they are getting stressed out. Big Panda, an AI ops company, recently did their annual research of uh, 1,300 IT executives that I'm going to be referring uh, to throughout this video. <clears throat> it's called the, the Future of Monitoring and AI Ops. I'll provide a link at the bottom uh, to download if you like. Even before the pandemic started, uh, this new normal mode of operations, IT operations teams were stressed to deliver more with less. In that survey, uh, the innovation and CICD culture have increased the normal operations workloads by 50% from before. The majority surveyed, surveyed uh, about 53% of them, expected their NOC IT ops workloads to increase even more in the next two years. IT ops and NOC teams experience fast moving IT stacks. These technology changes, uh, whether they were necessitated by faster development methods or, or were necessitated by hyperscale architecture-based changes or, or even technical debt-based in retiring some of the old legacy architectures, almost always require additional training and insights into the stacks as well as additional qualified analysts and support personnel. About 47% of the respondents see constant application and code changes in the future, and about 39% constant infrastructure changes. Most of them see multiple daily changes, sometimes even hourly changes. To keep up with this, IT ops teams have requested more budget, more automation tools, and more qualified analysts. However, very surprisingly, 56% of them surveyed in this report said their budgets to stay flat and about 21% said their IT operation budgets might shrink. Worldwide IT spending is projected to trim down to, to 3.4 trillion in 2020, down 8% from 2019 according to Gartner. Over the last few years, software design, development, and testing teams transition away from the traditional model 
to a remote work alternative, though a lot of corporations have decided to promote face-to-face -face collaboration workforce culture recently, they had a mechanism to fall back when the pandemic hit. However, the operations teams were almost always working from a centralized network or security centers, NOx or SOX, and had no such setups in place to work remotely if needed. You can read more about this in APM Digest, where this article is published. I will provide a link below for this as well. The common theme here is this. IT workloads have increased. IT with cloud native technologies has become very complex. The number of monitoring tools and the number of alerts have also increased. The IT teams are more siloed than ever. It is taking a long time to identify the root cause of the problem. Hence, the MTTR, or the mean time to resolution, is, is long. War rooms are taking way too long to resolve incidents. The bottom line is that old-fashioned IT with old-fashioned thinking can lead to disaster. Reduced budgets, reduced resources, increased workloads, and added stress could all lead to an unsustainable spiral. If the CIOs can support the digital dependency from anywhere during the pandemic and beyond, the businesses will eventually fail. An easy way to avoid that would be to add something like an AI ops to the mix. AI ops stands for using AI in IT operations. It's a Gartner definition, of course. You can read it online on what that means and a detailed explanation about that. But essentially, you can use AI to do a lot of this mundane work and help that are the support teams that are already thin and stressed out, <clears throat> or rather the IT operations folks who are stressed out. At the core, the AI app solution can help with some of the following. Alert correlation, noise reduction, root cause identification, ticket enrichment, and change tracing. Generally, AI op solutions can pull all alerts from a lot of this monitoring, alerting, and maintenance tools. Tools such as APM, NPMD, ITSM, ITOM, logs, or even the newer setup technologies called the DEM monitoring tools, which stands for Digital Experience Monitoring Tools. With that, it can help correlate events, cross-domain, cross-silos, and help figure out the root cause fairly quickly. Given that there are um, all time series tracked events, it's easy for AI to figure out which alerts happen at the same time and what changes that went in using change tracking, of course, that could have caused it. Imagine your war rooms lasting for a matter of minutes instead of days and weeks, which has become normal nowadays having a targeted root cause analysis and identification. What all this means is this, L1 is spending a lot less time, L1 support team that is, in chasing the issues and look at targets, um, recommendations from AI op systems on what could be causing it. This means they will not be chasing everything and avoid what I call an alert, alert fatigue. By doing this, they could reach the root cause of the problem quicker than ever before and hence either fix the issue or escalate it sooner if they can't fix it. Your measurable metric, the MTTR, becomes a lot smaller. If you do a quick search on some of the reports, that you will see that what the MTTR is before and after AI op system implementations. Very valuable tool in my mind. In my article, I also call out a few more things. If at all possible, start supporting non-critical business applications, especially during these uh, stressful times. This will free up a lot of support time so they can concentrate on, on supporting business critical applications. Prioritize solving business critical issues, such as scalability, security flaws, etc. Over non-critical issues, as well as uh, feature requests, they all can wait. Automate the IT processes as much as possible. 
the IT team should be set up to find and solve issues efficiently, not on a wild goose chase. Synchronize development and the IT ops teams. Unless the ops teams are aware of things that broke the system, they might be looking in the wrong places to solve issues. Use ML, AI, and AI ops to reduce the noise, also known as avoiding multiple alerts, tickets, and, and for the same incident. It can create a lot of noise so the team can avoid distractions, spot early warnings, and concentrate on real issues. Properly implemented AI op solution can reduce up to 95% of alerts and avoid teams from feeling overwhelmed by alert fatigue. Automate the routing of incidents to the right resource quickly rather than escalating through the multiple levels of support. If you already identify a specific issue, you need to go to a specific uh, person in L3, there is no need for it to be routed through L1 and L2. It only wastes time and resources. Because of the remote working situation, the number of daily incidents have gone up. In some verticals, such as online learning, entertainment services, and collaborative tools, the incidents levels have gone up almost 10 times. Some of those online collaborative tools, security flaws were exposed under high volumes. Between dealing with those incidents and keeping up with the development and DevOps team pushing fixes, pushing changes to fix them rather, the ops teams and IT operations analyst jobs have now become the most stressful of the IT jobs. Let's help them help us. Please feel free to reach out to me to discuss this further either at thefieldcto.com or on Twitter at Andy Thurai. And most importantly, stay safe.